Namaskar. This is a two-part series that I'm going to be talking to you about two countries. What we are seeing play out in Bangladesh could very well start playing out in Sri Lanka also. And we're going to do a little bit of a compare and contrast between the two countries, how the British set them up when they left in 1947 and what is happening now. I'm sorry, this is not going to be a very pleasant uh, monologue, but we have to know the facts because unless we know what is happening on the ground, we will not be able to face them. All these things affect India in the future, so Bharat needs to be prepared. I'm going to share with you a small slide deck as I looked at the demographical change that took place in Bangladesh over the last 100 years. And you will be shocked to know what it was just 100 plus years ago to what it is now. A small request again, all of you to please like this video because we have spent like two weeks now uh, gathering information on this because we are not only telling you the facts on the ground, but we're also going to tell you some of the trends that we are seeing. So please like this video and share it with your family and friends. Here we go. This, like I said, is part one. This talks about the demographic change in Bangladesh. And in part two, we'll be talking about what is happening in Sri Lanka. Guess which country is headed for elections next? You guess it right, Sri Lanka. Guess what India has big, big stakes in the stability of Sri Lanka because that could also start sending refugees unless everything is managed there. So here we go. Let's first look at what is happening in Bangladesh. And I'll give you an update at the end of this on what is happening in Bangladesh. And so stay tuned till the end. A lot of new developments, not necessarily good for any one country in particular. Here we go. How Bangladesh was Islamized, one lie at a time. The entire Northeast, except the plains, are traditionally populated by various tribes and clans, which were very much part of Hinduism from time immemorial. Remember the Shamantaka Mani, which is why the Manipur, which is from Mahabharat. And, and there are many other instances of Pandavas and uh, others having spent time in the, what is called today Northeast. Remember, Brahma is nothing but Brahma Desa and uh, Airavati is Iravadi. Airavati is the uh, name of the river. So we have a lot of connect with all these countries and some of them have become Buddhist, some of them have become uh, Islam. But the truth is that there was one time when all of this used to be Hindu. So it is suspected that the census conducted by the British in the 1901, they did a lot of hanky-panky. What they did was they did not uh, enumerate some of these tribes as being Hindus, but they just left them as tribes. For example, many worship Shakti and Kali, and they were also worshippers of Shiva and Vishnu in that uh, Jagannath form. You know that big eyes and things like that. I'm trying to oversimplify it, maybe, but I'm just trying to establish a context here that many of these tribes are essentially Hindu in nature, but now they have drifted towards Christianity. Very unfortunate as to what Pandit Nehru did in his 17-year uh, term as Prime Minister. I don't think Indira Gandhi did anything better. Somehow it was considered taboo to even question them. At least today we are asking questions of Modi. But those days, people didn't take them very kindly when you ask them questions. Indira Gandhi had a very mean streak to her. The Hindu population, as per the British and after the independence, we have got the Bangladesh also giving us the report for census. And if you start seeing how the percentage of Hindus changed, it will just make you sick. In 1901, 34% of what is today Bangladesh was Hindu. It is out of three, one was a Hindu. In 1941, it came down to 28. By 1951, it had come to the lower 20s. And come to 2011, we are at 8%. And I'm just going to show you a map of how the distribution is. The higher Hindu percentages are in some districts, like for example, Barisal has 9.23%, Chittagong 7%, Dhaka 7%, Khulna 13%, Maiman Singh 4%, Rajshahi 6%, Rangpur 13%, and Silet 14%. I'm just going over, uh, you know, the big picture. I don't want to, I'm just rounding it up. Um, you can see that the population is sort of spread almost across Bangladesh. It's in some pockets, you can say. Selet, Khulna, these are all border areas. Unfortunately, they are on the wrong side of the border, in my opinion. They should be belonging to India, but they are not. So this is the distribution. And you can see that at least 
there are some areas where it's fairly dense but again the numbers are only one in six now it's not one in three as it was before now what is happening today there is a uniform decline of a 1 to 1.5 percent every decade birth rates of hindus of bangladesh is going down and uh, muslims is always high bangladeshi muslims often refer to hindus as malau or malu a derogatory term meaning cursed by god and this is being taught as a primary agenda in many madrasas and mosques by the way the isi never went away although i'm told that after 1971 victory india withdrew raw see the, this is stupidity in my opinion what happened was india spent so much money fighting the war that it found itself at you know at a very very low ebb so they needed to cut costs and the 72 73 and then the gulf uh, you know the opec formation and spiking of uh, petrol prices just hugely dented india but in that time india really cut back on its raw resources from uh, bangladesh which is why we find today that india has to rebuild its intelligence networks and worse it has to depend on uh, parties friendly parties like the awami league to do much of their intelligence on the other hand on the other hand and as you read this thing you will see that it was not just the pakistani army that raped plundered and killed hindu women this is the sad part and these people are still alive many of them have been uh, scot free they just see if you don't punish these people the the culprits right they'll be emboldened to do it again which is where we find ourselves today now post 1971 the following states have had the maximum number of bangladesh refugees as per official records andaman 1 lakh Assam 75 lakhs, Tripura 22 lakhs, Uttarakhand 2 lakhs. Don't ask me why Uttarakhand. West Bengal 3 crores. You know today the population of West Bengal is 10 crores, give or take. Okay, so 30 percent or 3 in 10 or even 1 in 3 approximately. Let's make it 3 in 10. 3 in 10 West Bengali persons are of Bangladeshi origin. and and i can tell you many of them are not indian citizens so really if you if you think about it there is a lot of illegal vote being cast but unofficially it can be double which includes both hindus and muslims so does that mean that you have more bangladeshis in west bengal than indians well if your guess is as good as mine but these are all the statistical numbers as per one estimate 75 constituencies in bengal have a significant bangladeshi hindu population mainly 70 constituencies in the southern districts 24 parganas and so on and so forth around 2.68% of bangladeshi hindus and 2.75% of bangladeshi muslims are reported missing from bangladesh as per surveys and this means that they have mostly migrated to bharat unofficially and are not returning there are all these unaccounted numbers this is apart from the numbers as per the official record of refugees the name of the city dhaka comes from the hindu goddess dhakeshwari whose temple in dhaka is the most famous almost all the temples and their assets properties etc have been confiscated by successive governments including hasinas awami league using the vested property act and for the 1971 hindu genocide and mass raping only the pakistani military i told you about this right was blamed but in reality a large number of bangladeshi muslims under the razakars para military force rpf aided by the british and pakistan also participated in the mayhem along with the military and they gave the vital intel on bangladeshi hindus i urge you all to read mascarena's article about the rape and plunder of bangladesh even today most of the anti hindu activities are done by the remnants of razakars under the guise of a political outfit jamaat e islami their only goal is to establish a pan world without borders islamic state with strict sharia laws usa cia has been on the side of military rulers their efforts to have a vassal democratic government in bangladesh have so far failed 
During the last two decades, the Chinese factor has risen to a significant level in Bangladesh. They want a port that will help them avoid the Malacca Strait and they would love to occupy Bangladesh and, and be able to go move goods through that. Even if it is just for the limited uh, reason of moving goods, they would want to do this. So it becomes all the more important that India act and India act quickly. The USA does not seem to have much support from the military as well as the people as of now. As a matter of fact, I mentioned this in another hangout, I am hearing that many expatriate Americans who are living in Dhaka are now winding up shop and returning back to America. They are selling their stocks and investments in many industries and they are also selling some of the houses which are in what I would call as safer areas of uh, Dhaka. And they are selling those high-rise properties also and leaving back for homeland. Does that mean that U.S. doesn't think Bangladesh is going to be safe in the months and weeks to come? Your guess is as good as mine. In the confusion, China may try to drop up Khalida Zia with military support. Remember, ISI is the henchman and both China and U.S. are probably aiding them uh, to try and achieve their end. So this is where things get a real twist in the whole tale. The USA may use the current temporary government of Yunus to acquire rights to the St. Martin's Island, after which things will start really heating up. But if they don't do that, US will be able to apply pressure through IMF and WB, that is World Bank, UN, UNHRC and so on, like the way US CIRF keeps pounding India. So where Bangladesh is headed is, is real delicate and what India needs to do, I've already told you, India needs to create some means of protection for the Hindus of Bangladesh and for them to not leave because the moment this is established and stabilized, the big, big, this, this Sharia stuff will all get completely under control and they will have to start dealing with the reality of life that their Islam Radical Islam driven stuff will not run anymore. Once India manages to do that, you will start seeing the whole world change. India can show the world the way. Will it is a big question. Bharat has its own influencers inside the military and government administration. The biggest advantage of Bharat is that Bangladesh depends on Bharat for almost everything they need. Let me tell you about salt. You know, Bangladesh can't produce its own salt for a very simple reason. The amount of fresh water that comes from Ganges and Brahmaputra as it goes and reaches the delta and into the Bay of Bengal, it makes the Bay of Bengal water very, very uh, light on salt. It's not salty water there because of the fresh water inflows into the bay. So there is no land available in Bangladesh to make salt. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it, you have to come down along the coast of India to even the southern part of Odisha before you can start. Uh, you know, getting salt from ocean. So this is the reality. They need salt, they need rice, they need uh, cotton for their garment industry. So there are many choke points that India can affect. In fact, India also supplies electricity to large parts of Bangladesh. That's another thing that India can choke off and, and this could really be devastating. I don't know which choke point they are going to start using, but clearly India has a few levers on its side to try and bring about some order in Bangladesh. It's not just the order. These Jamatis have to be caught, tried and hanged. That is the most important thing. Because even as we speak, even last night, there were Hindu properties that were being burnt. Like I told you, Hindus are spread across Bangladesh. It's very difficult for army or the police to, to keep control. This is where things start going pear shaped So the people have to understand their consequences to their actions. That is the key message that uh, we need to be driven. And I think now US having accomplished one goal is probably going to sit quiet because until the elections are decided in November, it might not indulge in any other uh, action in, uh, in uh, Bangladesh. Now, here is something that uh, will really shock you. Dr. Bhupendranath Datta, the brother of or younger brother of Swami Vivekanand, in his 1930 study reveals how the Suravardi family manipulated Bengal's Muslim population data to secure its inclusion in Pakistan as detailed in his book on Bengal's history. A partial translation from History of Bengal by Bhupendatta. Page 146, 
1891 census saw a slight population increase in Dhaka and Chittagong district. 1901 saw a recurring increase in Muslim population. The 1911 census shows that Muslim population of East Bengal increased at double the rate of Hindus. What is the cause of such sudden sharp increase? In this regard, the 1951 census report of Pakistan, bulletin number 2, acknowledged that 21, 31 and 41 censuses might have been influenced by political and communal motives. This bulletin goes on to admit that in the 1941 census, the population of East Bengal is shown as 42.3 million. However, it should have been only 38.6 million, a good 4 million less based on correct tabulation. So, this is leading up to the uh, independence. Suravardi wanted to have the what I would call the Eastern Bengal be part of Pakistan. So, they inflated up the numbers. And in page 147, Bupenda says, it's worth noting that in the 1921 census, Potua, painter, storyteller, etc. castes were considered Hindus. However, in 1931, they were counted as Muslims. Similarly, many other such castes were, that were part of the Hindu umbrella were counted as non-Hindus or tribals. Owing to the imperial political motives, the population of Hindus in Bengal was understated. Besides, to weaken the upper caste, a terminology of caste Hindus and scheduled caste Hindus was introduced. Divide and rule. This division was not based on the traditional Hindu caste system. It was a British imperial motive driven division. Again, there is irreconcilable discrepancy between the 51, 41 and 31 censuses that needed investigation. The investigation shows that there were 5% fake entries or 1.7 million. So, this is the book BN Datta, Population of Bengal in Modern Review in 1931. And this is where we are going to stop as far as Bangladesh is concerned. But we are going to give you a peek into what is uh, happening in Sri Lanka. There are significant differences between the Sri Lankan Tamil and the Bangladeshi Hindu issues, although both are Hindu. The region of East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, in Northeast India were predominantly Hindu for centuries. Islamization and Christianization happened only after the British took control. You can say, why are you whining now? These guys left 78 years ago. But point is, you need to know your history, otherwise, you'll be doomed to repeat it. During World War I and II, the British required a large supply of meat, particularly beef, for their army. However, Hindus opposed cow slaughter. Buffalo slaughter was prevalent and accepted by Hindu tribals only in Nepal and Northeast, including what is now Bangladesh. So, this is where our uh, slide deck ends. And I would just like to wrap up by saying that this is a complex problem that has happened over many, many decades. The ISI is very much active. However, inside Pakistan, the ISI is having some sort of a rebellion. It's also fighting with the army. It's having its own internal mutiny because Faiz Hamid has been arrested and he's about to be court-martialed. So, a lot of stuff is happening. In order to understand what's going to happen in Bangladesh, we should look at what is happening in Pakistan. And we will be doing that in the next few episodes and series to come. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.